Are we trading health for convenience? Imagine you're at the grocery store. You need to eat this week just like every other week, but you also need to save money. A loaf of bread is only a couple bucks and you can make sandwiches with it all week. Convenient. But today is different. For some reason, you flip the bag around and look at the ingredients. What the hell is all this stuff? You say to yourself as a mom pushing her baby in a cart looks at you like you're crazy. You have a couple other thoughts before you put the bread back on the shelf. Bread takes a long time to make. How is it only a couple dollars for a whole loaf of bread? In this episode, I'm going to make the argument that bread as we know it, at least in the United States, is actually more of a bread product, similar to how American cheese is a cheese product and not actually cheese. The bread industry calls this type of bread pan bread or sandwich bread, and we'll talk about whether this bread is a good or bad thing later in this video. If you're from another country and you've had American bread before, please let us know in the comments how it compares to bread in your home country. To make bread, and I'm talking about leavened bread, bread that rises, humans have only ever needed a handful of ingredients. Flour, water, salt, and yeast. But bread products today at almost any grocery store contain a laundry list of ingredients, often considered harmless or generally recognized as safe, that don't really serve to make the bread any more healthy for you, but rather, they make it faster and easier to produce. And if it's made faster, that means it's also made cheaper because time is money. We need to talk about this because, at this point, we all probably know someone who took a trip to France or Italy and told us how great they felt after eating bread or pasta there, and how crappy they feel when they come back to the United States and have the bread and pasta products that we have available here. There are most likely a ton of factors at play here, but today we'll focus on the ingredients in bread and if they're really necessary. Hopefully, we can talk about some possible solutions as well. As with all of my videos, I'm just a normal person trying to figure stuff out. I'm never giving advice of any kind. And sometimes, we all need a peanut butter sandwich for nostalgia's sake, so I'm by no means telling you not to eat bread or bread products. So, let's start off with this ingredient list for one of the most ubiquitous white breads in the United States. Wheat flour, water, high fructose corn syrup or sugar, yeast, soybean oil, barley malt, wheat gluten, salt, calcium carbonate, sodium, steroil, lactylate, vitamin D3, vinegar, mono and diglycerides, calcium sulfate, monocalcium phosphate, yeast nutrients, ammonium chloride and ammonium sulfate, enzymes, yeast extract, wheat starch, calcium dioxide, ferrous sulfate, which is iron, B vitamins, in quotes, niacin, thiamine, mononitrate, B1, riboflavin, B2, folic acid, soy lecithin, azodicarbonamide, soy flour, whey, calcium propanate to retain freshness, datum, sorbic acid. First off, I really like the quotations on B vitamins. It's almost like they're unsure if they actually put the B vitamins in or something. But seriously, that's 36 ingredients, maybe even a couple more depending on how you count it, for a food that needs four ingredients to make. But why all of these added ingredients? Why are these ingredients added? The answer is that bread takes a long time to make. Dough needs to ferment, and companies don't have time to wait. They also need a final product that looks good, tastes good, and will have a shelf life of around three weeks or so. Let's look at some of these ingredients to see what they're used for. Why are they in our bread? The first up is high fructose corn syrup or sugar. These work twofold. Sugar aids in speeding up the fermentation process, and any sugar that's left over after the yeasts have done their thing will make the bread taste sweeter. The next ingredient is calcium sulfate. This is a nutrient for the yeast, and it aids in the fermentation process by acting as a buffer to control pH, or acidity, of the process. Soybean oil or other fats. Companies will add seed oils or butter to the bread product to give it a soft, moist texture while keeping water content low in order to resist mold growth. In other words, it increases shelf life. Next up is vinegar. Vinegar is added to prevent mold from growing, but also has the effect of softening the bread a bit. Soy lecithin. Soy lecithin is an emulsifier that helps the dough to expand. Uh, next up is datum and mono and diglycerides. Datum is actually short for diacetyl tartaric acid ester. Both of these are emulsifiers that help with dough expansion and improve consistency of the dough. Next is the most infamous of all United States bread ingredients, and that is azodicarbonamide. You've definitely heard about this, or maybe you haven't, but it's also used to expand foam in yoga mats. It's used for maturing flour and helps the dough to expand. Next is sorbic acid. Sorbic acid is a very commonly used preservative, and another use for it is to prevent mold on hams. On some hams, they'll spray it all over the ham to prevent mold from growing over a prolonged period of time. 
Next up is calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is literally plaster, and it's added to the dough to help control pH and help prevent the dough from becoming too sticky. It reacts with acids to produce carbon dioxide, which helps the dough to rise. Similarly, monocalcium phosphate also helps to produce carbon dioxide to help the bread to rise. Are you seeing any patterns with these added ingredients? They basically all serve one of about three different purposes. Either they're speeding up fermentation, they're helping the dough to expand, like helping more bubbles or smaller bubbles to form in the final dough, or they're acting as a preservative by delaying mold growth. My question is, what's the big rush? Why force the yeast to ferment the dough at hyperspeed and try to churn out billions of loaves of sandwich bread so that they can sit on the shelf and defy nature by not decaying for weeks? We all have our own opinions about the industrialized food system, but the simple answer is profit. Companies have to make money, people need to eat, so companies have figured out ways to speed up the fermentation process, added ingredients to help the dough to expand, and added preservatives to allow the bread to last for weeks. Regular bread, bread bread, plain old bread takes time. Fermenting dough can take hours or days, and fermenting large volumes of dough and making it consistent poses an even bigger challenge. So to supply big-name grocery stores, fast food chains, and franchises with bread products, scientists needed to figure out a way to shorten the process while making a product that tastes good and lasts an unnaturally long time. So back to one of the main questions, why do some people say that bread from Europe doesn't give them any trouble but bread from the US does? Humans have been eating bread for thousands of years, but they've only been eating ultra-processed bread for about 100 years, give or take. The additives in the bread could be the culprit. Some emulsifiers, for example, might interfere with how bacteria in our gut communicate with each other, which can potentially have negative health effects, although no definitive data has been produced yet. Ultra-processed foods in general are linked to several diseases like heart disease, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, high blood pressure, and stroke, and that's just to name a few. We should also note that all wheat is not created equal. And there are two pretty big differences between wheat from the United States and wheat from Europe. For one thing, some sources say that the type of wheat used in the United States has higher levels of gluten than wheats used in Europe. Therefore, people who are sensitive to gluten might have more gastrointestinal issues with wheat products from the United States. I've also read that France and Italy in particular have stricter standards for additives in wheat and flour, but since I don't speak French or Italian, I can't really find any specific articles other than some blog posts that talk about this. So if anyone knows more about this, if you're from France or Italy, please let us know in the comments. It might actually be something as simple as people in Europe, particularly France or Italy, have access to freshly baked bread, whereas people in the United States don't. Ultra-processed breads definitely exist all over the world, but in countries where there's a bakery every other block making fresh bread with normal ingredients every single day, why would anyone choose ultra-processed bread product over the real thing? Additives in bread products in the United States are not acutely toxic, but the question is, do we know the long-term health effects of consuming them? And the short answer is, we do not. For example, azodicarbonamide was only approved for use in bread in 1959. As with everything, there's not enough evidence to really say if consuming bread products made with additives will cause anyone to develop health issues, but there are associations with poorer health in terms of consuming ultra-processed foods. Seeing as a lot of bread products might fall into the ultra-processed food category, it's really up to your individual taste, health status, and dietary preference to decide if you want to eat this stuff or not. I would argue that the ultra-processed bread is more of a bread product than actual bread, and funny enough, Subway's bread isn't legally able to be called bread in Ireland due to its extremely high sugar content. There's also the question of glyphosate. Ah, oh, don't get me started. The U.S. is known for using copious amounts of this herbicide, the producer of which has had to pay $10.9 billion in cancer lawsuits, but denies the claims that it causes cancer. There are reports that the US and UK actually spray glyphosate on wheat before it's harvested. Other European countries use it as well, but have begun to phase it out over the years. And it's possible that concentrations of this herbicide in flour could also contribute to gut problems or digestive problems after eating bread. You can theoretically avoid glyphosate by buying bread that's been made with organic flour. The main problem is that this bread product made with upwards of 36 ingredients is ubiquitous. It's everywhere, and that makes it convenient. It's served at your favorite restaurant. They sell it at your local grocery store. You can get it at the gas station on the way home in a pinch. 
So if you love bread, then you might want to actually seek out a local baker that uses high quality ingredients and bakes bread in a more traditional way. Or you might just want to buy the ingredients and bake the bread at home for yourself. So with that, what do you think? Are we choosing convenience over health? Are these ultra-processed breads potentially contributing to the development of health problems? So I want to give a shout out and a huge thank you to all of you that have commented on my other videos. The amount of information spreading out there is amazing, and I never imagined that so many people would reach out in the comments or even via email. It's really great to see varying perspectives and hear about different experiences, and I'm really looking forward to future conversations with all of you that decide to comment. I really, really appreciate it. And if you made it this far, or even if you didn't, thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe, share this with a friend, tell us about your personal experience in the comments, or give it a like to help me with the algorithm. Take care.